physically, you know, this is all concrete. This is concrete. This is a book. This is a mobile phone. Concretely, I can see. Physically, I can see. Isn't it? This physical access or availability or ability to see them physically, these are concretization. This is you know, concrete. It is all. What you don't know. See, what is there under this desk? What is there under this desk? Can anybody see? It is not seen by you, right? So then whatever is not known to you, it becomes abstract, right? All the conceptions to start with are abstractions. When you are a child, you don't know what is mother also. Isn't it? You don't know anything. Food also you don't know. Nothing you know. Everything is abstract for a child. For adults, some of the things become concrete. Some things are still abstract. So all concepts, whatever you are learning, basically they are all abstract. There are abstractions. So when you, how, do, how does an abstract become concrete? How does unknown become known? Huh? How do you learn? How can I make you to understand? Experiences? Okay, good. What else? Example? Example? Yes? Example? If I give you, if I say mobile, it's very difficult when beginning mobile came, nobody knows. I show a mobile and say this is mobile. Right? So, some experience you have and also some example if I give, concrete example if I give, it becomes concrete. When it is not known, it is abstract. When it is known through an example, through a metaphor, through analogy, through some simulation, you know, all these ways where you can concretize or make it, you know, known to them through these processes. So teacher always puts the effort to bring some models into the classroom, to bring some objects into the classroom, to demonstrate certain things in the classroom. Why if they do all these things? So that it becomes more and more clear, understandable for the child. So that they will conceptualize and conceptual clarity. Once conceptual clarity is there, you will never forget. Isn't it? You do an experiment in the laboratory. How do you do experiments in the lab? I know most of the students at graduate level in science classes, they go with a manual to the lab and just look at the manual, keep following the instruction, do it and come out. Record also they don't write. Who will write? From the manual they copy, one bright student will write, everybody will copy from there. What is expected in a science lab? Why science laboratory experience are given? In social science you are given field experience, why? You know, live experience you will get, right? You see, they said E is equal to mc square. Principle of gravity. Gravitation, titrations you have done. You know, what is quantitative analysis, qualitative analysis, all that you have learnt in chemistry, right? When you have learnt all that chemistry in the theory, when you go to the laboratory, you are trying, analyzing that. When you analyze it and do on your own, you know what is that group element, what is that PPT, what is that titration, all that you will be doing on your own. When you do it, you will never forget, right? When you do it, properly when you do it, not like manual following, geo map kind of things. So our learning is becoming mere imitation and then practice. Practice also required. When do you require practice? Suppose you are doing a dissection. Now there is no more dissection. All simulated dissections are happening. Even in the simulation, with the technology tools, when you do it repeatedly, you know how to conduct them dissection, how to conduct some kind of an operation for medical science students. So similarly we have today, e-labs have come, virtual labs have come. These virtual labs are helping us to combine different chemicals. H2 plus O2 is equal to H2O. Such an abstract thing. But I go to the laboratory, take H2 and then put O2 and see. Practically I can see there is water. Two gases when they combine, you will get what a very concrete example I have shown to the student. Then they know there is no confusion about it. But when you read it, it's such a confusion for us. What is this H2 plus O2? How do gases can make it to a liquid? Very difficult, right? So this is how the practicals are given for the students in sciences. So that they will learn things better and they will understand the concepts very clearly. This is not happening, right? So, in the process of teaching, a teacher should know what are the principles, psychological principles of teaching, what are the maxims of teaching, how should learning and teaching should happen in the classroom, what is the role of the teacher, what are the characteristics of the teacher, what are the characteristics of the learner, what are the styles of learning. See, this is not different. You are reading them separately, right? You are reading every topic 
separately in the aptitude, teacher, characteristic, separate. Learner style, separate. And then uh, something else. Uh, what is that? Memory level teaching. Teaching, separate. Teacher characteristics, separate. All that you are memorizing. And you are not visualizing anything. Are you visualizing anything? Now visualize. Start visualizing the concept that you are reading. I don't need to talk to anything. I'll just provide you some push and guidance so that all of you will now when you start reading this topic, not only this topic, any topic, you will visualize that. You think of a teacher, you think of a classroom, you think of your school classroom. Then when the question comes, you will look at very logically at the question. Suppose if I am there, suppose if I am there, what would be my decision about it? How should a teacher deal if there is indiscipline in the classroom? They will ask such questions. If there is indiscipline in the classroom, if the student do not follow instructions of the teacher, what do you do? What do a teacher do? do in the classroom. You punish, you send them out of the class, you counsel them. So many options will be there. Then what is the correct answer? How do you know which is the correct answer? What as a normal student you expect from a teacher to do? Counsel, right? So that would be the right answer. Some teachers, authoritative teachers think they should punish them. Still there are parents and teachers who believe in punishment. But it is not the order of the day. Today there is no more Corporeal punishment. As per RTE 2009, also in the syllabus I have seen, they have mentioned RTE, NCF curriculum framework for center. It's very difficult for you to now emulate all those things. But still, you can go through those documents to understand how curriculum was framed. What is this RTE? Right to Education, Education Act, right? This came in which year? 2009, right. When was it implemented? April 1st. See, you have by hearted everything thoroughly. So if they give such memory based questions, you can easily answer. But if there is any critical analytical question, you will put zero. Right? You will get zero. So you have to always reflect. Reflect on what is happening there and how it is happening. What is happening. All those things when you have a critical mind, critical approach towards the things. I think a realistic situation you assume. You visualize the whole lot of situations then I think your way of looking at teaching aptitude totally transforms. And you become a real teacher, whether you qualify in net or not, that's a different story. Tomorrow you may become a real teacher in the graduate class, school class, wherever you are. You will become a very good, excellent teacher who can inspire your students, right? So this is how I thought I would interact with you. Any questions you have, you tell me. Instead of always talking about this book booklet, I will do that also, don't worry. I will do that also. But you tell, you ask me something you have a doubt. You were reading, right? Last so many months. You have by hearted this whole 30, 40 pages in all the competitive net exam book. Am I sure? Am I right? Are you sure? You have by hearted already? Not Very good. What did you do? If not by hearted, what did you do? You did not read? Only 10 marks were left in for choice. No? Then what did you do all through? How did you prepare for the exam? For teaching aptitude, how many marks you want to get? In the race of marks, how many marks you want to get? Why did you come to this class? You wouldn't have come for this class, right? Had you left in the choice, you wouldn't have come to this class. Part one, you have to gain more score, right? From commercial point of view, right? You have to gain marks. When do you gain marks? When you learn it thoroughly, right? So you must have by-hearted by now. Because I could see some answers coming up from the students. Nothing wrong. Nothing wrong. By-hearted. But learn. Understand. Okay? Emulate it. Simulate it. Whatever you want to do it. But make it perfect with you. Right? So like that, there's a whole lot of text that is talking about. I'll just touch upon the areas. Uh, so now you know what is memory level of teaching. What is understanding level? I don't read all these points, you know, these all points, you know. The very understanding of memory level is without any clear understanding or conceptual clarity, you will be by hearting the material. What is by heart? People used to use this word when we were kids. By heart it. Teacher used to say by heart. All formula, all tables, all definitions, all parts of speech. You have to buy heart and next day tell back to the teacher in the classroom. Otherwise, they used to black and blue. 
they used to punish with black and blue. So, you should know corporeal punishment is not the order of the day. If at all they give any option with corporeal punishment, that is, you can happily dis delete that particular answer. Or what, what you do? Deletion, what is that word used? Elimination. 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 You eliminate such kind of things. If you are clear about something, then you start elimination. Then you will arrive at the proper answer. I don't prepare like that. That is not my job. You prepare, right? But what is this memory level? Now you understood, right? If at all any question come on memory level, you will be able to answer. Can you answer? Yes, ma'am. What will you answer? Huh? Correct answer. You think at least you will give correct answer, right? Now understanding? What do you expect in understanding? I told already. I told already what is understanding. Conceptual clarity you should have. Suppose if I say description about a particular instrument, let us say, or about a uh, place, anything, any topic you take, any concept you take for that matter. Suppose if I say animal, everybody know what is animal, right? Can you define what is an animal? Can you define what is an animal? Can you define? What happens when you define? No, no, no. When you define, you will be giving the characteristics in that. Animal means there should be four legs. Huh? All four legs are animals. What else? Huh? There should be life. There should be life. So many characteristics, right? So there are essentially certain things should be there. These four legs now, podium also have only one leg. Table have four legs. Dog also has four legs. Then chair also has four legs. Then all of them are dogs or chairs or tables? No, no. So conceptual means all the characteristics of that particular thing, you should be able to know and describe them. So when you know the characteristics, automatically you know about it. Isn't it? You know the distinction between chair, table and dog, right? How? Because you understood what a chair, what characteristics should be there with a chair, table, animal, whatever. So that is how conceptual means. What is that concept? What are the essential things a concept should have? Isn't it? It also has four legs, but it has no life. It cannot become an animal, right? So that has legs, but that is not the chair because it moves. It cannot move. Now moving... Chairs are also there. But they are different. They are only when they, they, they move only when you put the pressure on them. Kinetic energy and potential energy. Right? You know that. They are in the potential energy state. When you give the pressure, they come into kinetic. But animal moves on its own. So there are still distinctions. Even in spite of all automation, there are certain basic characteristic features for every concept. If you know those characteristics, you have understood the concept. If you have understood the concept, you will never forget the concept. If you memorize, because you are not understanding what it is, you are just memorizing. When you memorize, you tend to forget, but when you understand, you will never forget. More so, you will develop the ability to apply this conceptual knowledge in a new situation. That's why I said, no, how do you distinguish? When I said distinguish between, distinguish between the what is these two types of learning? Let us say the memory based learning and something else learning. So how do you distinguish? What is distinction? What is the difference? When I say distinguish between, difference between. Difference between two things. How do you know the difference between two things? The characteristics which are similar may be certain things which are not similar based on which you will be able to make a distinction between one with the other. So there the conceptualization goes on and application comes. Where human being can sit on the dog or on chair, you will know because you know the characteristics of a dog and a chair. You can't sit on the dog, it will bark and bite you. So where should you sit? So these are all the simple examples I'm giving you. So any conception, when you have this conceptual clarity and able to distinguish between one and the other based on the basic characteristic features which are essential, which are not essential. There are non-essential, there are also essential. So when this distinction you can make, you develop the process of reasoning, thinking, critical thinking, analytical thinking, application. These are all in Bloom's taxonomy. You have learned knowledge, understanding, application, analysis, synthesis, evaluation, or judgment. 
And then there is another taxonomy has come. I show you all those things briefly explain also. There is revised taxonomy K because earlier we were talking about the noun form which is static, not dynamic. So then they have changed into verbal format. So revised Bloom's taxonomy K. This is all very big language for all of you who are not from education. But still I would say this revised taxonomy helped the teachers to become more or focus more on the process of learning. Earlier, when I say memory based learning was mostly focusing on focusing on learning outcome. Focusing on learning outcome. How much you learn? They are more interested to know how much you learn. So the memory based learning used to happen. If you learn by heart this whole book, na, definitely I tell you, you will get at least 8 marks. Then why do you want to understand it? So everybody prefer to by heart by closing their eyes. So you will get the score. But after about a one month or two months, next net exam, if you don't qualify now, again you have to buy hard. Had you had conceptual understanding, you don't need to read again and buy hard again. Got my point? So like that, this whole process of, at the primary level, it is the knowledge level, then understanding level. Once you understand the concept, you will be able to apply it. Once you are able to apply, you will be able to analyze it. Analytical skills you develop and also synthetic skills you develop. What is synthesis? What is analysis? Analysis is from one point, I give one small picture to you, then you will understand. Can we use this word? This one. So just see this. This is simple. If I put arrow outside, whether they are in place or not, each one of them you pull out and then see. The concept from the one to, you will try to create that clarity with all the bits and pieces, all that parts and parts, you will break them and then see that is understood. Similarly, when you say synthesis, all of them you will bring together and conceptualize. So, synthetically and analytically, all analytical, synthetic skills you develop to understand various things. Then you will make the decision, that is judgment, we call it evaluation. What is evaluation? What do you mean by evaluation? You will apprise and know. Why? See, you are all given some examination. Why examination is given? Why exams are written by you? You test your knowledge and you, to test your application skills, everything, not only knowledge. That's the reason why we are all like this. In our exams, only knowledge-based questions are given. What questions only are given? Never we have a question of why, how, no? and distinguish, critically analyze. Whatever question they give, we will write only knowledge, answer. And our teachers also don't bother, they will give you marks. If at all you don't write analytically, you should be given zero. But we are not given zero, instead we are given full marks, because you wrote every answer, right? But it is not analytical. What is democracy? It can be a memory-based question. If I say... What is the status of democracy in India? Critically analyze the concept of democracy in India. Write your perceptions or views or critically give your views on democracy in India. If you just write the democracy in India, it is not sufficient. But what you should do? You should critically analyze democracy from various point of, points of view. What is democracy? Equality, fraternity, justice, what not. All these aspects you take and subject them to Indian democratic function. Then you will know the whole idea. So you are, you are understanding the concept and you are able to present in a very critical fashion in the examination. Right? So like that, the questioning will make us to know how much you have understood. This is all assessment, evaluation, you know, evaluation, teaching, learning and evaluation. So this whole process of curriculum, you will know teaching, 
learning and the assessment. So there is teaching happening, there is learning happening, there is evaluation is happening so that I can make a decision whether you learnt or not. Whatever type of test is maybe objective type of test or application type of test, memory based test, whatever kind of test. Depending upon the type of questions, you know, learning outcome based curriculum we are talking all the way these days. So there you have the lots and hearts. What are lots and hearts? Ah, questions, lower order questions and higher order questions. Lower order thinking and higher order thinking. When you say lower order thinking with what, when, where will make you still remain there at the knowledge level. But when questions come like how, why, how do you, why do you think so, you know, these questions will make us to think critically, right? So in the process of learning and evaluation, the teachers will try to give such kind of questions or whatever type of question it is. After teaching learning get over, you want to know how much the student has learnt, isn't it? How much the student has learnt. You will have different types of questions. We will say blueprint and all. We will give knowledge questions, understanding questions, application questions. All type of questions should be there actually in reality in a test paper. So you are evaluating the student. Why we are evaluating the student? To know how much they have understood, how much they have learnt and what is their stage or level of learning. That's why we give grades, A grade, A plus, B grade, this and that. Why? We have evaluated them, we have assessed them, we appraised them. We came to know how much they know about the subject or topics that we have taught in our respective subjects. Right? So like that, the evaluation will happen. So there will be different types of evaluation. We say formative evaluation and summative evaluation. What is formative evaluation? What is summative evaluation? Now what is happening in the class when I am asking you a question, what type of evaluation is it? It is a formative evaluation because why? What is formative means? Okay. In, mo in more closer realistic way, you can, can you tell me? What for formative evaluation? You are only giving answer what is formative. What for formative evaluation? Just think. Not only that, like you know, you want to make them to learn. You know, the formative assessment is to make them to learn. It is the process of making the students to learn. See, when I ask you a question, some of you can answer, some of you cannot answer. Then I should again repeat it because some are still not able to understand the concept. So when I ask the question, when you give when I give a task to you, you will not be able to do in that case.